Oh yes, we better do you one of these. Foam body daddy. Very, very simple and straightforward. But it's just another type of uh, showing you how to put in a wing in. Now it seemed, well, it seemed a bit strange, but one of the, <coughs> what, what I'm finding is one of the favourite colours is yellow or brown for the bodies, so I'll try a brown body, I'm just going to cut a thin strip of foam off. But again, it's, we're going to show you different types of wings, the spent wings. Got a size 10 dry fly hook, medium wire. Spot of varnish again. The trick with this one that I'm going to show you is with the legs. Still got to put the knots in, it's how you tie them in. It might help you a lot. So catch the silk in, but we're only going to come back maybe a quarter of an inch this time. Catch in. I've only got two more after this. Yeah. I'm going as slow as I can. <laughs> <laughs> you <look> spot on. <laughs> right, so that's my body. It can be as long or as short as you want. You might think it's a bit wide, but it's not. Believe me, when that's on the water, the fish will still come and have a go at it. <clears throat> right, the legs. Six legs. Just bear with me a second because I've got to put the knots in it, but it won't take me long. <laughs> You've got remarkable eyesight or something that's been doing that for donkeys. I'm not sure where it comes out then. No. To get counted or not. No. I'll tell you a little story to do with that. It, it started... When I was in my twenties, and I was very privileged, I was uh, invited to go and fish the junction pool at the Tweed. I'm downstream of the of the uh, road bridge. There's a big bend, and it goes onto the back of somewhere called Herbert's Lane. And there was an old doctor over there. I remember his name, Doctor Goodylock Hood, and he used to fish the junction. He came down. We were chatting, and uh, oh, very very well spoken. And he said, "Can I give you a tip?" about your eyes, because we're on about fly tying this as I said, you know, which my eyes were good, he says, I'll give you a tip about your eyes. And what he said to me was that your eyes, the zoom in your eyes, he says, it's like a zoom lens in a camera, and the more you use it, the quicker it will wear out. It's like a muscle that goes, you know what I mean, if you sat in the room and you're reading, and then you look up at the television and it takes you a few seconds for your eyes to zoom out to the TV. Then you come back to the book and it's zooming back in. It says, every time you do that, it's one less you've got at the end. Does that, uh, it, and what he said made sense. And basically what he was saying to me was that my, at home, I'm tying the flies here, right? And the TV screen is there. So if I turn, I'm not changing the vision. In the eye. I don't know if it's worked, but I'm in my 60s and I don't wear contact lenses, so it, there must be something. It's, it's too late once you get past about 30 to try and do anything about it, because you've already used the... Do you understand what I mean about the elasticity of the muscle, though? And you might think he's talking a lot of crap, but it might be. <coughs> but this guy was an eye surgeon, so I thought he knew what he was talking about. Which is fair enough to me. He didn't catch any fish, though. <laughs> but he was a very nice man. Right, what I do with the pheasant tail fibers is individually I'll put them into my hackle pliers to tie the knot in. Because all of a sudden it makes that pheasant tail fiber about three and a half inches long. Yeah? That's why I can do six fairly quickly. 
I know I should have been tying them while I was telling you the story, but... No, I mean, again, if you can imagine how many, I mean, Lady Bell is a fantastic place for, place for the daddies, July, August, September, and they have an awful lot. And I don't use imported flies. I'm sure you don't, do you? No. No need for it nowadays. Having said that, my pal Richard at... SKB, I'm sure you, most of you have ever heard of him. He imports flies, the quality of which I've never seen before. Um, I wouldn't even, if somebody asked me to do some of the patterns that I can get from him, <laughs> I'd either say to him, if I liked him, I'd tell him to go and buy him from him. If I didn't like him, I'd buy him from him and charge him my prices. Because he's selling Humpies at 25 pence. He's selling Adams at 25 pence. Quality dry flies. I don't know how they do it. On 16s and 18s. You know, you think. Of those apart, I wouldn't touch a Kenyan fly. But some of the dries are exceptionally good. Right, so get the knots together. Here's the trick. I bet you've shown them this, haven't you? No. You tie them in all together and all facing out the front. Right? And it's, it's, it'll become obvious in a second. That now I can just take three and I can position them on the far side. And I take three and position them on the near side. And guess what? All the knots are at the same distance back. Because I bet you lot have sat there, you tie three on, and then it takes you an hour to get the other three to match them. <laughs> it does, it's, it's the, and then somebody shows you, oh yeah, why didn't I think I did it like that? Put all six in at the same time. Once you've got them trapped in properly, you can fold them back and position them. You know, you could have them all on the top if you wanted. <clears throat> think about it with hawthorn flies. You know, we need two legs. Mm -hmm. <coughs> tie, them, tie your legs, tie them in with the knots facing out at the front, yeah. and pull them back and trap them in on each side. It's easy, dead easy. Right, look, at, it's a bit ginger this one, but it'll be alright. So, we're going to tie this one, this hackle, dull side up, so it's dry fly. We'll have a couple of. Uh, a bit more suitable for the wings. You can use a couple of hackle points. And again, we're going to position these so that they're curving away from each other. In the same length. And then you can actually just cut the waist off before you tie it in. Pinch and loop, trap those down. Lift the, <coughs> lift the wing tips up, uh, sorry, the, the feather tips up. A few turns behind and then you're going to drop them down the side. A figure of eight through so that they're sat <coughs> one at each side like this yeah and then you simply come underneath with the feather yeah you've got to have magic fingers to make it do that <laughs> through to the front. By now you're realising it's actually very easy to get the silk to the front 
you don't need to trap anything else in because you've trapped it all in just then. Nothing's going to come undone. Quick finish at the front. And there you go. I think that'll that'll float all the my favourite fly.